Um, thank you, my name is James. Um, I'm a partner here at Wardle. And thanks for the opportunity to present to the Impressive Library to you all today for the educational architecture. Um, our commission for the library was actually part of um, the broader north and transformation project, which was a suite of buildings for the um, University of Tasmania in Launceston and Burnie. Um, and our initial strategic move was actually to move the existing master plan in Ingress from the south into the industrial precinct in the north where the existing architecture building is um, and free up the realm for the community. So we actually had three buildings there in red that were part of our commission. And the library was the first to be completed um, and acts as the, the heart and front door to this new campus. So the industrial context um, of Inverest became our starting point to consider the character and archetype of this new building. And we looked to the, the vernacular of the existing buildings from the, the 19th to 20th century, long rectangular gable forms, which were the, some of the Launceston railway workshops. Um, and to the, some of the early to mid 20th century square footprint sawtooth forms of more the high carbon area. Uh, so like the scale for industrial production. So we were left with these empty sites um, that were of quite sort of irregular footprints. Um, and we looked to kind of establish these hybrid forms that would fit within this context um, and have their own sense of character and establish a, a vocabulary more for the 21st century of a low carbon future. So a lot of work has gone into these buildings um, with the university into the reduction of both the embodied um, carbon in their construction, also the operating energy of all of these buildings. So one of the strategies here was the importance of holding the corner on this site. Um, and this is reinforced by the shift of the existing orientation of the sawtooths and the existing buildings to face directly south and turn the corner. So you get this varied silhouette on approach as you move around the building. So here arriving from the city along the tram corridor, um, and as you shift around each viewpoint, um, has a different reading of the building um, as you arrive from different parts of the campus. So this sense of this hybrid sawtooth becomes kind of completely abstracted. And in a way, this asserts this principle of a learning institution that has revitalised this former industrial precinct. So the key purpose of the library is to create um, a welcoming open front door to the campus for, for students in the community. The, the ground floor acts as um, um, primarily a student services consultation hub with multiple entries. So it creates quite a, a permeable um, arrival. Um, this idea of um, this brick paving that blurs with the public realm externally and actually moves right through the whole ground floor and connects with this new laneway connection. So this idea of bringing the outside in and the sense of openness um, with the, the broad urban realm um, and arrival here, there's um, an indigenous welcome piece um, that was made by a local artist. And this greets people with um, various artifacts on display. There's also a cafe that we located on the southern corner near the entry and that supports an active edge and this reinforces this sense of permeability to draw the public and community in. There's two key points of vertical movement through the building. One stair is, is more embedded um, with a lift core, and the other is a more open, celebrated, um, more emblematic stair and that's um, positioned within a void. So as you move up through the building, um, the type of activity shifts from the more active, um, busy ground plan to a more quiet, study, collaborative mode on, on this middle floor. Um, and one of the more important spaces here is um, uh, the rare wine collection. Um, which is a special place within the building, and this provides a cultural space for the community for collaboration and communication. And at the top level, um, this gradient activity shifts to more of a typical library. So this is where many of the bookshelves and quiet study spaces are located. Um, and this, this, this whole space really is defined by the characteristic um, uh, entire timber construction for this upper level of columns and sawtooth roofs face south. So the timber structure and shape of these sawtooths do reinforce its industrial character within its, um, uh, within the kind of ingress precinct, um, but does so you know, in a quite a warm and welcoming palette of materials um, for a library building. Um, 
quite complex. They're meticulous detailing um, of all these unusual junctions given the, the kind of hybrid nature of these sawtooths um, were beautifully carried out in such high quality um, by the local trades, which we were um, very impressed by. Um, so of course, these bring um, unshaded south facing natural light right across the top level. Um, and that natural light is balanced with other carefully um, large windows that are located within the external walls. Um, and these provide key views out to some of the surrounding precinct. James, that was five minutes. That's it? Well, that was five minutes. You can keep going, but if you want to have a discussion. Um, it's clad in mill-finished aluminium, which spans over um, some of the windows with a perforated gradient. Um, and you get this quite, quite sort of reflective finish that will die off over time. Um, and at night, you get that sense of the, the kind of blurring across those windows, the perforation. Um, and a real sense of openness to the ground plane. Thank you. Um, just in terms of uh, the way that um, the way that the the work is structuring a kind of quality of the campus, and I know that the university has restructured a lot of its te teaching methods. How, can you talk to that uh, a little bit, James, in terms of how the Perhaps the plan resolves the new the new pedagogical engagement that's been that's been deployed. Yeah, so this is this is part given the, the two other buildings. The other one that's just about to finish is River's Edge, and that's literally about 50 metres to the north of this building. And that is more primarily teaching spaces with um, other Riawana spaces as well, and that they are more for teaching. This building more is, is a point of arrival for students to feel welcome as a front door to the campus, but it is also um, some of the more one-on-one -on -one, um, student teacher um, consultation. So it's, it's about creating uh, quite a diversity of settings that the university can actually recalibrate depending on the needs throughout the year. Um, so it, it, it is quite a, a loose fit in a way, but also allows them to be quite specific. Um, but it, it is a building that is more general in terms of um, students come here to study, there's consultation, um, there's community workshops. Um, so it, it's, it's more the, the kind of general um, academic use rather than more specific teaching and learning, which is really the River's Edge building, which is just about to be complete. Okay. What's your this image? Can you talk about the approach to the sort of that finer grain, the way you bleed in the building, the inside and the out, in terms of that urban precinct? Yeah, so we were quite interested in, in ensuring there was a, a kind of clear wayfinding device for arrival within the precinct, particularly given this was the front door. Um, so we did look for devices both within the ground plane um, through the use of this counterpoint of this um, red paint that we used on some of the key entries that would clearly denote where the entries were to the building, but also then through the red brick that actually extended out into the, the, the grey stone paving of the urban realm and that would kind of mark this sense of drawing people in um, rather than creating a hard line between what was exterior and interior. There really was this building trying to really break down the sense of the institu typical institution and make it feel more welcoming for even um, the public and tourists within um, who might be visiting the precinct. Um, so it, it, it really is just that sense of permeability. I was just wondering about the hybrid structural system and what the sort of driver was for having three different structural systems within the building. Mm. Initially, as always, we intended this, for this to be a fully timber constructed building. Um, we were, there were some constraints around um, the flood level. We did have to raise the building up 500 mil for a flood level. However, it was um, initially too great a concern that if it did flood, timber construction wasn't suitable for particularly the ground floor. That was slowly whittled to these top two levels. And then finally, due to, to cost um, and availability at the time, because we were looking initially to align this with um, a, a new factory being established in TAS for the construction. Um, 
we ended up having to get it from Big Bang here in Victoria. So um, we held on to the top floor as we thought that was the most important space that would kind of define the character of the use of timber construction. So it is a concrete lower two floors with um, timber at the top. And of course, that just what would always use these steel plate connections to create all the... Thank you very much, but I will have to stop you there. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Just stop, Janice. <laughs> Thank you.